muted except for myself. Everyone will be muted except for myself. If you have a question, no worries. Just type it into the questions box, not the chat box. The questions box, we will see it and respond. Be sure to have full use of your webinar with the maximization of your screen size. This webinar will be recorded. If you have any questions or you want to replay anything with this webinar, be sure to play it back a little bit later on our YouTube page, which is where we're going to be recording this. You will also be able to see the PDFs, which we have stored at our members slash webinars page. So let's go ahead and dive in about what do you want to learn today? What do you want to hear more about? Do you make a note to yourself? Do you want to hear more about when do I apply for retirement? Do you want to hear more about how am I paid once I'm retired? There's lots of things to consider about what you want to learn today. So make a note or two, and we're going to circle back a little later to see if we covered everything. First question, when will I be eligible to retire? You'll need to meet certain age and service credit requirements to retire. So this workshop is more the steps along the way to retire as far as being already eligible. So for those of you who already meet the eligibility requirements, you'll see that in a different presentation and in our member handbook. We're going to drop that in the chat box to you so you'll be able to see those as well. So that's when you see the things like 25 at 55, any age at 30, 65 at 20 years, and those are at different amounts and levels. So please take a look at our handbook for more information on eligibility for retirement. Once you're eligible for retirement, you can apply up to six months in advance. That first step is to submit forms to TRSL. You'll need to complete all purchases and transfers of service credit. So if you have time you need to put into our system, maybe you need to put back in refunded service credit. Maybe you need to uh, put some time into our system in which you worked at an out-of-state public school or an in-state private school. Those are things to consider as well. You do want to stay in touch with your employer to communicate to them what's best and what you're thinking about. When you are within that six to 12 months before retirement, you want to communicate with them what your plans are because they will be a part of what's going to be happening next. So when you apply for retirement, and I'm going to go over the forms in just a moment, you can apply up to six months in advance of retirement or entering drop. You're going to be receiving an acknowledgement letter from TRSL within two weeks of submission. So you will know that we received your information either electronically or the paper version. Now you have the option of doing either again, electronically or the paper version. The electronic version is available on member access and the PDF as well with your submitting the form 11 to our office. Now, if you're entering TRSL drop, you're not going to be entering a form 15D at this time. So if you are applying for drop, just the form 11. But if you're applying for drop and you're applying for retirement, that would be, excuse me, if you're only applying for drop, that would not be the form 15D, just the form 11. Applying through member access, it's easy and it's right at your fingertips. Under apply for retirement from the My Retirement drop down menu, you will select that and you will see the options right in front of you. Now, this is going to be preloaded with your information. All the information automatically comes to you and you can make changes if necessary. What's very important online is to click submit. Submit is clicking send, if you will, to send that directly to our office, like when we send an email or a text message you'll need to click submit. You can print a copy for your records, but we will need the submitted copy to come to us. Let's take a closer look at the form 11, the application for service retirement ILSB or drop. Let's take a closer look at each of the sections. Our first section, one and two. Section one is going to be what type of retirement that we're entering, whether we are entering service retirement, ILSB retirement or drop retirement and that retirement date. Now know that we can't do a past date, but you can put a future date. 
So if you are planning to retire in six months, you can put a date that's six months from now, but you can't put a date that was a month ago and submit that to our office. So no, we can go forward in time for the application date, but not in the past. Section two is going to be your general information. So that's going to be things like your name, your address, your marital status, your employer, those types of um, data that we'll also need to make sure that we've got everything updated in our files. Sections three, four, and five, as we're looking, and Cliff, it's a little tiny. I'm trying to zoom in on it with my eyes to see that. So Cliff is my colleague. He's on the other end of this. So if there's anything I overstep on, please let me know. But so section three is where someone will choose an ILSB if that is an option that they choose. Section four is for the ACO. Not a lot of people have chosen the ACO option, which is where you self-fund your own um, COLA, so to speak. So not an option a lot of people consider. So something to consider if you're thinking about that. And option five is where you will put your beneficiary that you would like listed for you to review, which will be on an estimate, an official looking estimate called an affidavit that will come to you. So this is not where you're setting that in stone for step five for the beneficiary. Rather, you're saying, I want to see what my numbers look like with this person's information here. Form 11, Section 5A, is if you choose one of the other retirement options, one that's called Option 1, and you have additional beneficiaries, you do not have to put anyone's name here. It does not mean you're choosing Option 1. You can always add into this later if you do end up choosing Option 1 among our eight retirement options. And for more information on that, you can watch one of our pre-recorded webinars called Your Retirement Options. Form 11, sections six and seven, this is when we're looking at if you have a drop account, correct Cliff? If you have a, I'm sorry, it's just a distance from me and I'm trying to see it from here. So if you have a drop account and you're wanting to have a beneficiary listed for the drop account, that is going to be section six for drop participants. And section seven, it does need to be signed and dated. Very important as well. Unless you are applying for drop, excuse me, the form 11 is for applying for retirement, for drop, and for ILSB retirement, which is our lump sum retirement. Form 11H is for you to apply for retirement if you've already participated in DROP and you're on your way outside of the system. Now with both the Form 11, unless you enter DROP, and the Form 11H exiting after DROP, you'll have to fill out an additional W-4P tax form for your federal taxes. That's an important note. Form 11H, Sections 1 and 2, this is your general information. We're wanting to know, has anything changed for DROP participants? Has something changed, your marital status, your employer, anything we need to be updated on? Sections 3 and 4 are going to be those other options to consider Section 3 um, Cliff, if you can share with me what the top part of section three has. I feel like I'm at an eye exam, sorry. And section four, of course, everything must be signed and dated. So form 11H is to include, if you're also including the 15D, is that correct, Cliff? 15D? Yep. Yes, that is correct. Speaking of 15D, if you're applying for service retirement or after drop retirement, we need to know where to send that direct deposit. Where are we going to send this off to? And that's our Form 15D. This is one that needs to, quote, go to the bank, so to speak. The bank will need to fill out a portion of this. In our first section, Section 1, you're going to have all of your basic good stuff information, your name, your address, and you're going to note a couple of things here. You're going to note if you have any changes to a 15D, if you're updating any information to a 15D. 
in the future, once you are happily retired and off, off of our system and just quote unquote on the retirement payroll, if you need to make any changes to your direct deposit, you'll use this same form, this 15D, and you'll check the box that there's a new bank information or it's the same bank, but it's simply going to be a different account number. That's what you'll check here in this section. You will of course sign and date, very important for all of our forms. Sections two and three. Section two is if you have a joint signer. If you have a joint signer for section two, we will need to be aware of that. And section three, this is the one that needs to go to the bank. There is a required signature for section three for the bank when you are setting up your direct deposit. So be sure to follow those directions. And there's also a direction page that comes along with it as well as the 15 as the um, 15 D. So you'll be able to take a look at that as well. Now that we've got our forms out of the way, you're going to take a look at submitting documents to our office. We're going to need copies of certain documents. And if you have already entered drop, well, I assure you, you've already sent those over to us. But if you have not participated in drop yet, we will need copies of things like your social security card, birth certificate for you and your beneficiary, legal documents, anything legal that has happened, divorce decrees, judgment separation, community property settlements. And once you send those documents over to us, know that we might need to verify something for a little while. So be aware that we may need something additional. We're typically going to just need copies, not originals. If we need a certified original of anything, in particular, a legal document, a certified copy or such, we will definitely let you know. Step three is to return a completed affidavit to our office. Our members retiring after drop, you've already checked this box. This completed affidavit is submitted to our office and I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment. It's going to be mailed to you closer to your retirement date. This is where you'd pick one of the eight retirement options. You will receive this affidavit by mail, and then you will return that to our office. It's going to have one of eight different retirement options on it. And this determines, and it's locked into stone. This is when things get very serious. This is when things are finalized, so to speak, along the way. This decision is a permanent choice. You do not get to change your mind on the retirement option. You do not get to change your mind on a lifetime beneficiary if you have chosen one. If you're within five years of retirement, I highly recommend you see a retirement estimate. So you want to see what your numbers look like. When you're taking a look at your numbers, you'll notice there are different options. Maximum, option one, options two, 2A two pop-up, three, 3A three pop-up, and four, for a pop-up. These options can all be considered on a retirement estimate. And this affidavit looks like a very official version of a retirement estimate because that's exactly what it is. It is mailed to you and it has instructions about returning it back to us, the most important of which we need the original return to us. We need it returned within a certain amount of days, 60 to 90, depending on what you're applying for. We need a notary that will have signed and witnessed your signature. And in some cases, your spouse must sign it. In other cases, your spouse must not sign it. So your information is gonna be populated here. So you'll see your numbers and you will then follow the steps along the way on this step for the affidavit. If you have any questions about the instructions, please contact us. Tell members all the time, please come to us with your questions. It's why we're here, it's what we do. And you only retire once pretty much in a lifetime, right? So that's why we're here to help you. If you have any questions with this affidavit, please call us before you go to the notary so you know what you need to do, what you'll need to sign and what you need to return to our office. It does come with these instructions. So you'll notice a copy of that that comes to you as well. 
We will need the notarized original return to us, have no alterations, and mailed back within 30 days, in fact. So that's a 30-day turnaround on our estimated affidavit. Step four, this is the fun part. After we've celebrated our last day and everyone is going to celebrate in a different way, right? Some of us are going to celebrate because we want the whole parade. We want the parade. We want the cake. We want the balloon. We want all of it. Others of us, mm -mm, just a shape of me in the wall on the way out or in the door, or I'm going to celebrate with just a quiet dinner at home with family. Whatever works for you, celebrate your last day. And know that your first benefit payment will be a paper check. That's just your very first payment. After that, your subsequent payments will be direct deposit. So that's by state law, we'll send you that first one, which will be a paper check. You will need to deposit that to make sure that you're actually retired. So how does TRSL pay your benefits? Monthly benefits are paid on the first of every month. So your retirement is going to come to you after you've been retired at least 30 days, the first of the following month. So know that there is a 30 day waiting period. So let's say for example, that your retirement date is June 30th, but then August 1st is your check date. If you choose June 5th, for example, August 1st is also your check date. So I know you can't change your birthday, but if you have a little leeway to change you, what date you choose for service retirement for cash flow purposes, the end of the month tends to be a little bit easier, again, for those cash flow purposes. Notice that at first you're going to receive estimated benefits as first payments. So we can't overpay you and then collect on that. So instead, we're going to catch you up to speed a little bit later with a finalized benefit and a one-time retroactive check. Once your final benefit's been calculated, which is four to six months after your retirement date, you'll receive a letter telling you about any retroactive payment that's due in your next benefit check. So that's where we catch you up to speed from, for example, that month that we're missing in that 30-day waiting period. That retro payment is the difference between what we estimated to be correct and your final monthly benefit. This is when sick leave also can come in. And so the difference with that retro payment, it's what you were due, but that's what we settle up with about four to six months after you have retired. Step six, very important guys, enjoy retirement. Your finalized monthly benefit payment begins. So be sure to let us know if your name changes, if you wanna update your email address, Make sure you use a personal email address because you won't be checking that school address anymore. No, you won't. So you want to have a personal mailing of email address from member access and let us know if anything changes, your name, your account, your withholdings, whatever you need to do. Just be sure to stay in touch with TRSL. Whether you are a few weeks or a few years away from retirement, there are things you can do now. First of them is to register for member access. Registering for member access keeps you in touch with us and your TRSL information. Submit important documents to our office. This is those copies that we talked about earlier of social security cards, birth certificates, divorce or separation decrees, community property settlements, et cetera. Now's a good time to update your contact information. You can also check to see who your beneficiary is that you've designated. It may be someone exactly as you're expecting it to be. If you need to make a change, no worries. You'll just download a form three, print that out, fill it out, and then mail it to our office or drop it off. We do need an original signature for a form three if you're an active member and need to update that beneficiary. Getting a retirement estimate. Do it yourself at TRSL's member access by submitting a Form 10 to our office. Lots of things can be done under member access. You can update your name, mailing, email address. You can estimate future benefit with online calculators and view those annual statements that come out once a year. They're nice and fresh, usually at the end of July or early August is a good time for that. Apply for retirement or drop. 
Now, during drop participation, if you choose to participate, you can view your drop account. You can't do anything else to it. So you can make all your plans, tell your friends about it, watch it grow, but you can't roll it over or make any other changes. You can always view a beneficiary member access, but if you're an active member and you need to make a change, that's by submitting a form three to our office. At some point in the future, once you've retired and once you've reached over age 60, you may need to do things on our website like print an income verification letter or request a social security verification letter. Those are things to keep in mind that you'll have the ability to do on member access as well. Creating a benefit estimate. I'm gonna give y'all some homework. If you're within five years of retirement, you will want to create a benefit estimate. You are just a few clicks away, a couple of seconds really, from online calculators loaded with your account information. So just log into member access. If you forgot your ID or password, no worry. Just follow the prompts along the way and they'll get you in touch with Help Desk. Under the My Estimates drop-down menu, select Estimate Your Retirement Benefit. Enter your desired retirement date. Maybe it's your 55th birthday. Maybe it's your 60th birthday. Maybe it's when you reach 30 years or maybe it's when you reach 25 years. Or maybe you've already met that. You're just wanting to see what it looks like around Christmas or perhaps next year in the spring. Enter your desired date and then months of contract. You're under either a nine, 10, 11, or 12 month contract. Not how you're paid, but your contract that you work under. You can register for member access if you haven't already opened an account at trsl.org. Lots of things you can find online at trsl.org, brochures, forms, newsletters, and other webinars. We haven't discussed in detail things today um, like drop or social security offsets, things like that. If you want to learn more information about, please check us out online to watch our member webinars that are pre-recorded. So we're gonna circle back and I'm gonna check with Cliff in just a moment for questions to see what questions you have that maybe are some good questions we'd like to address with the group or things that you learned today or something you wanted to learn today, but maybe something we didn't get a chance to address. So while we're taking these questions, I wanna congratulate you. If you are the class of 2024 graduating in this school year, from graduating to retirement rather. So we'd like to congratulate you on that. So while we're taking some questions, I'm gonna sign off on the video, but Cliff is gonna let us know what questions we have today and what other topics we'd like to talk about. Again, we have lots of resources online, so I will sign off visually. Well, hi everybody. <laughs> Uh, technology. There we go. Sorry about that. We uh, are running basically just one computer short of NASA launching a satellite over here uh, at TRSL. Uh, my name is Cliff. Uh, I am one of the other public information officers here at TRSL. And I just want to touch base with you. I am uh, in the back today working, answering questions. And some of you have been submitting some great questions. Actually, everyone who has submitted a question, these have all been great questions to ask as you guys are getting closer to your retirement. Um, a couple of things I just want to touch base. I started typing one earlier and I was like, I'm just going to hold off on to that and I'll answer it to everybody um, in there. We did have some questions about sick leave. Uh, and when it comes to sick leave, really what we're looking at is we can't, uh, give you, because people always ask, well, what does it convert to? What am I looking for? What's it going to add? When does it make it closer to retirement? Um, we can't touch your sick leave as TRSL uh, until you've actually terminated employment, because currently right now it is a employment benefit, not a retirement benefit. Uh, so we can't touch it because you're still eligible to use it or earn more sick leave uh, all the way up until your last day of employment. Matter of fact, some of you may decide, I don't want the sheet cake in the break room uh, on my last day. I'm going to call in sick uh, and use a sick day. So that changes our numbers. But if you want, you can look at the um, brochure that's called sick leave, and it's going to be table two on that brochure that shows uh, the guidelines of 
how we convert those. Now, someone did have a question about summer days and how those are converted. Um, and, uh, and with that, um, it's a little bit uh, different because it, we have to convert it based on your percentage of working during the summer. Um, and unfortunately, we can't give you that number, exact number uh, with those until you actually terminate. I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but that's that's the answer um, we're at. Um, someone did ask another question about what documents do I need to submit to you? Um, that question, that, that the questions you need to submit to us, we need copies of birth certificates and social security cards for you and your beneficiaries. Um, those are copies. You don't need to send us the originals because we do not send them back. So please don't send us the originals. Um, sending us those, also any divorce decrees or prenups um, or separation of, uh, of benefits or uh, marital uh, things. We need copies of those documents as well. Uh, to make sure we uh, have it all on file. Uh, Melissa asked a question about, I'm in drop and looking to retire in May. Uh, I use my school's email for my contact. When should I change it to my non-school email? And that is a great question. Uh, we'd recommend getting it over to a personal email uh, sooner rather than later, just so you get used to accessing it from your personal account. Um, and that just makes it easier uh, for you. Um, Someone asked, uh, Gwen, uh, benefits based on your highest three fiscal years or the or highest three years? Uh, in other words, I retire in December, would it be the three years ending in September? So it will be your highest three years. And what we look at for years of service, it would be in this case, if you ended in September and you wanted us to count this year as your salary, it would only be from September to July, back to July 1st. So that's a short in section. So that would probably not be your highest year of earnings um, because you only earn from July till September for that year. Um, we always look at your three highest consecutive years in your career, um, wherever they may be, we're always gonna look at them. So some of you may have been a teacher, moved to an assistant principal and then back down to a teacher. Your highest salary is probably gonna be that assistant principal position. So we'd use those years um, for you. Um, so I hope that helps uh, answer those questions. Let me click a few here so I can keep track of which ones I've answered, which ones I've not. Is mine at the front door? Uh, no, yours is off. Uh, oh, okay. So a couple other, let me answer a couple more questions and then, and then we'll be able to jump back over to Jerry. Uh, this is a great question, Deb. If I take a lump sum in my retirement, <coughs> am I then eligible for my full social security benefits? So anytime you take a benefit from TRSL, in other words, the state of Louisiana, because you didn't contribute to uh, social security during that time with our employment, you are going to be subject to an offset, a social security offset. You're going to need to check with the social security office about what kind of offset you're going to be getting, even if you take a full refund of your contributions and don't take a retirement benefit from us, there still may be an offset. And that's a question that's brought up or needs to be brought up to the social security office. Um, their website is ssa.gov. Uh, and there you can find, I'd recommend doing this, going to find the local office's phone number and contacting your local office. Um, oh, uh, someone asked about another question about sick leave. Do I, when I accumulate my sick leave, uh, how much do I get to use? Um, and then can I sell any back? So when you retire, your employer is going to pay you for up to 25 days of your sick leave at whatever your current day rate is at the time that you terminate employment. Anything left will then be sent to us and we will look to convert it based on the chart called table two on the sick leave brochure. Um, and that will add to your benefit. Now it is adding to a retirement benefit. It is not creating the benefit. In other words, you cannot use it to reach the eligibility to retire. You have to reach the eligibility first before you're uh, able to draw on that uh, uh, that sick leave to convert into service credit. Uh, 
All right, two more, uh, a couple more questions about this. Um, it's been a while, but the last time I tried to get an estimate online, it said I couldn't, uh, probably because of some other time that I had with LSU. Um, if you cannot use the calculator, it is a great tool if you can, but if for some reason there's a, a, a little hiccup in your calculation or it says you can't because of something like service credit versus eligibility credit, um, what you'll need to do is use a Form 10 that's available on the website, um, or you can just go to asktrsl.org and send in a request there simply saying, hi, my name is uh, Cliff. I want to get an estimate for retiring next year with my wife as my beneficiary. Um, let me know. And then we will create an estimate and mail it to your uh, home of record. Uh, another great question. Uh, how do we get an estimate on our taxes on our retirement check? Unfortunately, we can't do an estimate. Um, that'd be a great calculator to have on there, Jerry. Oh, yeah. um, you have to think about that. Uh, if you're looking at your taxes, um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to, uh, I would recommend talking to, if you have an accountant um, or someone who does your taxes on the regular basis, they'll be able to give you an estimate on that. Probably a Google. There's, There's probably, a, as we like to say, a Google. Uh, that will have that uh, for you where you can say, I'm getting this amount from uh, retirement. What are my taxes going to be? And let's talk about that real quick. What comes out of your retirement check? Uh, federal taxes. You are state tax exempt, provided you continue to live in this great state of Louisiana. Um, and then your insurance, if you are planning on carrying insurance over into your retirement. The insurance is done by your employer before you uh, leave your employment. Before you retire, you talk to your employer, your HR department about carrying your insurance over. They make the arrangements with us to have it deducted from your check. So federal taxes get taken out and insurance if you're gonna carry it over and no state taxes um, because you'll be state tax exempt. Um, and then let's see, we did have one other good question I saw in here. I just wanna make sure I get to it. Oh, here's a great sick leave question. And then I'll, I'll actually, there's two here. Uh, does the university send me a check for some of that sick leave that there's 25 days? Yes, they pay you for those 25 days and they will either put it in your final check or they'll send you a separate check um, for that. The other question uh, someone asked, I'm a 12 month employee, but I worked as a nine month. And then I also worked for a 10 and a half month. How is it converted? Uh, is it converted as a nine month employee, 10 month? Is it scattered between the calculations? And the simple answer is whatever you are at the time that you retire. If you're a nine month employee, then we follow nine month guidelines. If you're a 12 month employee, then we follow the 12 month uh, employee guidelines. And that one. Sorry, I'm going through these questions. You guys, there were a couple of other ones that just kind of popped in. Um, do you pay state taxes if you move out of Louisiana? Yes. Whatever state you move to, those are the taxes that you'll have to pay um, at that one. Uh, can we bring the documents to the office rather than sending them in the mail? Yes. Uh, you can come to the office. We'll make copies of them right in front of you, and then you can submit those as your documents. Um, for sick leave, those 25 days are paid by the school, not by TRSL. Was the six month lead time for the bank's role, the form 15D, a hard minimum? What does Sorry. So, so was the six month lead time for the bank's role of 15D, the direct deposit form, is that a hard minimum? No, it's a, no, 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 absolutely not. As early as early as six months. As out. early as six months. As you can months you out. can turn it in later, but understand that the longer you wait, the longer it takes our accounting department to process in order to get that in uh, as a so we can set up your payment um, for your. 
uh, for your retirement check. You want to get it in as soon as you possibly can. Six months is the earliest. Um, have we had people walk in the day of their last day and say, uh, I quit today. I'm also retiring. Here's my paperwork. Yes, we have. Do you get paid immediately? No, you do not, because we have to do some processing um, for those. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that have asked about uh, drop. And unfortunately, I have to say this, we are uh, running short of our hard deadline for the time that we have today. Um, we do have uh, three great workshops that we've recorded and put on our website as webinars. Um, you can also watch them on our YouTube channel uh, about drop. Uh, there's one called Drop and Beyond, which is a fantastic one. It allows you to learn all the ins and outs about that. Um, about the drop process and the different options that are available to you. Um, unfortunately, this is going to be the end that we have today. Any other questions that you may have, we'd simply ask um, that you send them to uh, Ask TRSL. Uh, in there, you can send them to Jerry and myself, and you can send them through that. Uh, simply just put in the question box that has the AskTRSL.org website, write, hey, Jerry, or hey, Cliff, uh, and we will actually see those um, because we are part of the webmaster team uh, and be able to, to see those. Um, oh, that's a great question. Sorry. Uh, should we, this is another great question. I, I have to I see it real quick and I have to answer it. Should we request signature upon request um, upon TRSL receiving personal documents? Um, it never hurts to have that simply because we, we want to make sure everything is secure and that we've gotten it on file. Um, you can also uh, email us if you've sent it in, wait about a week after you've mailed it to us. Um, and you can email us and ask, hey, have we gotten this on file? And we can go and look at your file digitally to see that it's made it in uh, to the system. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. Jerry, is there anything else? Uh, that you'd like to add before we head out. I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And I have to point out, Cliff, it's Thursday. Happy Friday Eve. And if you're watching this on Facebook, I hope your next Thursday is a very happy Friday Eve. Thank you guys once again for coming out. Uh, we appreciate it. This will be recorded so you can watch it back at a later date. Uh, thank you guys so much and uh, have a great evening.